Hi, I'm Simon Vijaya. Welcome to another episode of Edge Animate Online Week. Today's advanced topic is templating. So using templates to visualize data is a real popular technique in our days of modern web design. And Adobe Edge Animate is the perfect tool to create visual components that can be used as templates. So let's have a look what we want to build right now. So this is the final composition we are going to build in a couple of minutes. So what we see here is a list with several data items and each item within this list has a title and a description. And furthermore, we have an image just like this, which is contained within the data object as well. Actually just the URL, of course. And to render this last step, to render this um, overlay, we use the Edge Commons open source library for Edge Animate. Um, so if you're interested in that library, you definitely have to check out edgecommons.org or simply watch one of the other videos of this Edge week. So yeah, let's have a look how we can actually build something like this. So here are some sketches. So everything, of course, starts with a content file. So this is just the data structure. So in this case, we are going to use a local JSON file. JSON is uh, a JavaScript object notation, which is actually nothing more than a simple JavaScript object. So what you see right here is valid JavaScript. So if you're familiar with JavaScript, you will recognize the brackets um, and the curly braces uh, and everything else. Uh, and of course, this is just for simplicity um, that we've stored this uh, in a local file. And you can, in a more complex environment, of course, serve this JSON file um, with a content management system, for example, Drupal, uh, Joomla or WordPress. So yeah, let's have a look how this file actually looks like. So we can use brackets to, to open this file and you can see there's a, a square bracket um, contained. So we are using an array and within this array we have several generic uh, anonymous uh, objects and each object in this list uh, has uh, a title a property and a description, both of the type string of course. And then we have the third property called Spotlight, which is a URL to, to the image that should be displayed whenever we click on the, the zoom button. So let's move, move back to the sketch. So what we want to do is, in the first step, we want to use jQuery to actually load the content of the JSON file. So whenever we are done with that, we have the data structure in a JavaScript object within our animate composition. And then we want to build um, a symbol, of course in Edge Animate, to uh, serve as a template. So we can actually use a script to instantiate um, this template for each item within the data structure. So in the final step, we will use jQuery again to, to map all the items within the data object to the, to the final list. So, for example, if we have three items in our uh, content file, we of course want to see all the data of the three items in our browser. So let's move over to Adobe Edge Animate and build our composition. So I have prepared a simple composition with a, a simple background and we are, uh, the only thing that we have right here is a SVG. So everything should start with the content area. So we simply can create a rectangle right here and we um, give it a name and we simply call it content so we can use it in a script later on. Uh, one thing we should do is to um, make the background tr transparent and maybe add some, um, some borders so we can actually see the content area just like this. So in the next step, we are going to build the template. So this is actually where all the magic happens. So first we start with a rectangle again um, and we can remove the, the border and simply set the background to white. So what we can do now is we can simply convert this um, element to a symbol and we call it template. And we disable the autoplay function because we want to control the, um, the start of the playing um, by script. So we hit OK. So what we did now is we created a template symbol within the library. So we can now do a double click on this uh, item on the stage and now we are within this template as you can see right here. So now we can simply build 
the template and be a little bit creative. So we want uh, the items to have a little gap. So we can do that just like this. And maybe we can build a small speech bubble. So we add another element and rotate it by 45 degree and uh, simply place it somewhere here. And we should um, move this um, new rectangle uh, so it's a child element of the other rectangle so we can now move both elements um, at the same time. So we can, for example, add uh, some graphical assets and rescale them so they fit into our template. What we want to do now is, of course, create the placeholder. The first placeholder is called title. And we can, of course, adjust the size a little bit, maybe load a custom font. For example, the source Sans Pro is a real nice font. So we can use this one and maybe change it to light. And we can uh, simply duplicate this text field and move it a little bit um, down and re um, give it a size of uh, 14 pixels. And we, of course, have to change this one to description. And of course, we uh, have to name these elements as well. So we can use them in a script. So the second one is description. And um, the first one is called title. So yeah, that's um, pretty much it. So now we are able to use this template and to inject some data. But of course, we are using Edge Animate. So what would be a creative work built with Edge Animate without animations? So uh, we simply can use the, the pin right here, for example, to um, let the, the speech bubble slide in from the left um, and maybe use some easing right here. So we want to ease out with a, a bounce effect, of course, uh, which is actually a little bit um, over the top always, but it's I some kind, sometimes think it's like uh, comic sans uh, of the equations, of the easing equations. So um, this is just for demoing, so it's, it's uh, so we can stick with that. And um, maybe we can just, uh, so um, yeah, maybe just use a linear uh, easing so he's fading in. And when the speech bubble is there, we can, uh, for example, um, just let the text elements fade in and maybe use a little offset so they don't appear at the same time. And uh, as you can see it right here, our visual elements are outside uh, the borders of the, the symbol. So if we um, deselect everything, we can change the overflow property of the symbol and uh, simply change it to hidden. So now we don't see uh, the elements outside, outside the boundaries. So we can click on the stage again. So what we see now on the stage is uh, this item again, and we can simply remove it. So there's nothing more than just the, the content um, element here, because if we delete a symbol, it's just deleted on the stage, but it remains in the symbol library. So we are going to use a script to instantiate the templates from the library, so we don't have to place uh, the template on the stage on our own. So the next step, is of course um, using JavaScript or jQuery in this case. So what we want to do is we want to use the creation complete event of the stage to trigger or actually to load um, the JSON file. So we can simply select the stage and then we can use a little script. So we can use the dollar sign to access jQuery. And in this case, we can use the get JSON function and simply pass in a string with a file name. In this case, it's content.json. Um, so yeah, that actually um, starts loading uh, this file. 
And whenever this is uh, successful, we can pass in a function just like this. And then we have access to the contents of this JSON file um, within this data um, object. So in this case, I'm just logging this to the, to the console so we can see the incoming data. So we can run it in the browser just like this, open the console, and then we see this um, small logging piece and we see we have uh, an array with a length of six and each object. So we can go back to Edge Animate and um, reopen the composition ready event. So now we can actually do something with, with this um, data. So in this case, we want to use the JavaScript or JSON function each, just like this. So the first parameter is the data object we want to, to use for the, for the each loop. And the second one is a function which expects two parameters. So the first one is the index and the second one is the item. So this function gets called for each element within the data object. So now we can um, create a new variable, call it simply s, and we can use the sim.create child symbol, which is a animate um, JavaScript function. And um, this one expects two parameters. The first one is the name of the template or the, the symbol within the library. We called it template. And the second one is the name of the container where this template should be added to. So if we were if we run this in the browser again, we do not see anything. And that's okay because we decided to not autoplay our templates. So it's simply uh, not visible yet. So we can simply use the S reference, which is actually a reference to the symbol and uh, use the play function. So now we should see all the templates um, in our list, just like this. So of course it's not perfect yet. So we have to um, do some, some, um, some more with this stuff. So first we have to use um, the S variable again to access the um, title field. So this is actually a reference, a jQuery reference to the title um, div container. And now we can simply add HTML to that, um, which actually removes the text and adds some new HTML or in this case, simply text. So now we can use the item, which is the item of our JSON um, data file. So we have the property title and the second one would be description. This uh, should already work and we can tweak this a little bit. So we do not use um, the plain play function, but we can use the index, um, which is the index of our um, data object within the data structure and multiply this with a negative value. So for example, with 500. So now we have a negative starting point uh, multiplied by the index. So not all the elements appear at the same time. And this is what it looks like in the browser. So now we already see the title, the description, and the animation starts. Uh, starts. So yeah, but another thing that's not really beautiful is um, this. I hope you can see it right here. So the elements uh, don't care about the boundaries. So we don't have a, a scroll bar. So you can imagine if we have lots of items uh, it would really get a little bit messy. So we can go back to Edge Animate. And since this is a uh, div container, the content um, container, we simply can uh, change the overflow property to, uh, to auto. So this adds um, scroll bars whenever uh, they are needed. So if we run that in a browser again, we will see the animation um, and now we have scroll bars. So yeah, that's already uh, great. So this is really rendering dynamic data. So um, I would just um, save this file and uh, move over to the extended version, which is a little bit different. So let's see what we have. So the animation is the same, but right after that, we are adding um, another element which is simply 
uh, another speech bubble with uh, some little icon in it. And um, what we do right here is we use the Edge Commons feature, um, ec.spotlight, to actually create this overlay. And we simply use a config object to set the width, height, the type, and of course the source. Um, so the source is a little bit um, more advanced. So we are using a variable, a symbol variable right here, which is called spotlight. So um, let's see where this variable is coming from. So if you go to the stage again and open the composition ready event, we see the first thing that is different is um, we are loading now the edge commons. So as I mentioned before, if you're interested in, in this extension, simply check out edgecommons.org. So uh, yeah, we're just loading a, a JavaScript file and a style sheet. And the other thing is that we now use the um, set variable function to set the, the spotlight variable on the symbol. So in this case, we simply assign the item.spotlight, which is the path or the URL to the image we want to show. So this variable then can be used in the, in the template item, just like this. I simply reopen it. So yeah, here we get a reference to the to the variable spotlight. So we can use this um, string, the URL to the source file and apply it to the spotlight. So when we run this in the browser again, we see the final composition just like this. And now we have these zoom icons and we can click on them and we see the, the image of the data set. So yeah, that's pretty cool and it's really um, you can use it in all kinds of different ways. You can use it, for example, to use or to render uh, Twitter data. And as I mentioned before, you can use it to visualize uh, content management uh, data. And yeah, it's really it's really a great way um, to use a creative tool to create really stunning templates that would be way more um, time consuming doing it uh, in, for example, plain JavaScript, of course.